Question 1. What do these motorway signs mean? C. They're countdown markers to the next exit. The exit from a motorway is indicated by countdown markers. These are positioned 90 meters, 100 yards, apart, the first being 270 meters, 300 yards, from the start of the slip road. Move into the left-hand lane well before you reach the start of the slip road. If you want to pass DVSA theory test in first time, you can download our EOS app. App contains 2500 DVSA test questions, 250 hazard perception videos, 630 traffic road signs and 300 highway code rules. Even 98.50% people pass their test first time after using our app. You can find link in the description, download app for free from App Store which contains latest 2024 material licensed by DVSA Authority, get 3 days free trial for a limited time. Let's get back to the video. Question 2. What will be a serious distraction while you're driving? A. Looking at road maps. Looking at road maps while driving is very dangerous. If you aren't sure of your route, stop in a safe place and check the map. You must not allow anything to take your attention away from the road while you're driving. Question 3. What should you do if you think the driver of the vehicle in front has forgotten to cancel their right indicator? D. Stay behind and don't overtake. Be cautious and don't attempt to overtake. The driver may be unsure of the location of a junction and may turn suddenly. Question 4. Your car needs to pass an MOT test. What may be invalidated if you drive the car without a current MOT certificate? B. The vehicle insurance. If your vehicle requires an MOT certificate, it's illegal to drive it without one and your insurance may be invalid if you do so. The only exceptions are that you may drive to a pre-arranged MOT test appointment or to a garage for repairs required for the test. Question 5. You're going through a long tunnel. What will warn you of congestion or an incident ahead? C. Variable message signs. Follow the instructions given by the signs or by tunnel officials. In congested tunnels, a minor incident can soon turn into a major one, with serious or even fatal results. Question 6. When should you use your vehicle's horn? A. To alert others to your presence. You mustn't use your vehicle's horn between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. in a built-up area or when you're stationary, unless a moving vehicle poses a danger. Its function is to alert other road users to your presence. Question 7. What makes your tires illegal? B. If they have any large, deep cuts in the sidewall. 
your tires may be of different treads and makes. They can even be second-hand, as long as they're in good condition. They must, however, be intact, without cuts or tears. When checking the side walls for cuts and bulges, don't forget to check the side of the tire that's hidden from view, under the car. Question 8. You're joining a motorway from a slip road. How should you deal with traffic already on the motorway? D. Match your speed to traffic in the left-hand lane and filter into a safe gap. You should give way to traffic already on the motorway. Where possible, traffic may move over to let you in, but don't force your way into the traffic stream. Traffic could be traveling at high speed, so try to match your speed to filter in without affecting the traffic flow. Question 9. You arrive at the scene of a motorcycle crash. The rider is injured. When should their helmet be removed? A. Only when it's essential. Don't remove a motorcyclist's helmet unless it's essential. Remember they may be suffering from shock. Don't give them anything to eat or drink, but do reassure them confidently. Question 10. Who's responsible for making sure that a vehicle isn't overloaded? A. The driver of the vehicle. Carrying heavy loads will affect control and the vehicle's handling characteristics. If the vehicle you're driving is overloaded, you'll be held responsible. Question 11. Why should you switch your headlights on when it first starts to get dark? B. So others can see you more easily. Your headlights and tail lights help others on the road to see you. It may be necessary to turn on your headlights during the day if visibility is reduced, for example, due to heavy rain. In these conditions, the light might fade before the street lights are time to switch on. Be seen to be safe. Question 12. How much can stopping distances increase in icy conditions? D. 10 times. Tire grip is greatly reduced in icy conditions. For this reason, you need to allow up to 10 times the stopping distance you would allow on dry roads. Question 13. What does this sign mean? D. Water across the road. This sign is found where a shallow stream crosses the road. Heavy rainfall could increase the flow of water. If the water looks too deep or the stream has spread over a large distance, stop and find another route. Question 14. You're going to tow a trailer that's wider than your car. What must you fit to your car before you start towing it? A. Exterior towing mirrors. You must fit exterior towing mirrors to your vehicle if your vehicle is narrower than your trailer or load your trailer or load obstructs the view behind you. Question 15. 
At an incident, a casualty is unconscious but breathing. When should you move them? C. When there's a risk of further danger. Don't move a casualty unless there's further danger, for example, from other traffic or fire. They may have unseen or internal injuries. Moving them unnecessarily could cause further injury. Don't remove a motorcyclist's helmet unless it's essential. Question 16. What hazard should you be especially aware of if you're turning left into a side road? B. Pedestrians. Make sure that you've reduced your speed and are in the correct gear for the turn. Look into the road before you turn and always give way to any pedestrians who are crossing. Question 17. What should you do when you're approaching roadworks on a motorway? C. Obey the speed limit. Be aware of reduced speed limits at roadworks. Speed limits shown inside a red circle are mandatory and cameras are often used to enforce the reduced limit. Slow down in good time and keep your distance from the vehicle in front. Question 18. What should you do when you park at night on a road that has a 40 miles per hour speed limit? B. Leave parking lights switched on. You must use parking lights when parking at night on a road or in a lay-by on a road with a speed limit greater than 30 mph. You must also park in the direction of the traffic flow and not close to a junction. Question 19. What will happen to your car when you drive up a steep hill? D. The engine will work harder. The engine will need more power to pull the vehicle up the hill. When approaching a steep hill you should select a lower gear to help maintain your speed. You should do this without hesitation, so that you don't lose too much speed before engaging the lower gear. Question 20. On a vehicle, where would you find a catalytic converter? D. On the exhaust system. Although carbon dioxide is still produced, a catalytic converter fitted to the exhaust system reduces the toxic and polluting gases by up to 90%. Question 21. You're driving in traffic at the speed limit for the road. What should you do if the driver behind is trying to overtake? C. Keep a steady course and allow the driver behind to overtake. Keep a steady course to give the driver behind an opportunity to overtake safely. If necessary, slow down. Reacting incorrectly to another driver's impatience can lead to danger. Question 22. You're turning right from a main road into a side road. There's no oncoming traffic. What should you do if pedestrians are standing on the pavement waiting to cross the side road? C. 
wait and give way to the pedestrians. You should give way to pedestrians crossing or waiting to cross the road into which or from which you're turning. Be patient if they're cautious and take their time checking that it's safe before they step into the road. Question 23. How should you drive or ride in areas with traffic calming measures? A. At a reduced speed. Traffic calming measures such as road humps, chicanes and narrowings are intended to slow traffic down to protect vulnerable road users. Don't speed up until you reach the end of the traffic calm zone. Question 24. When may you use hazard warning lights? A. When driving on a motorway to warn traffic behind of a hazard ahead. Hazard warning lights are an important safety feature. Use them when driving on a motorway to warn traffic behind you of danger ahead. You should also use them if your vehicle has broken down and is causing an obstruction. Question 25. What does it mean if your trailer has a maximum authorized mass, MAM, of 3,500 kilograms? D. Your trailer and load combined cannot weigh more than 3,500 kilograms. The MAM of the trailer is stamped on the plate fitted to the chassis. It is the maximum weight of the trailer and load that the manufacturer has designed it to carry. Do not load your trailer so that it exceeds this maximum weight. Question 26. When may you cross a double solid white line in the middle of the road? C. To pass a road maintenance vehicle traveling at 10 miles per hour or less. You may cross the solid white line to pass a stationary vehicle or to pass a pedal cycle, horse, or road maintenance vehicle if it's traveling at 10 miles per hour or less. You may also cross the solid white line to enter a side road or access a property. Question 27. What must you do when you hitch a trailer to a towing vehicle? A. Fit a secondary coupling device. If a tow hitch fails, the trailer must stay connected to the towing vehicle. This is achieved by using a secondary coupling device such as a safety chain. Question 28. In which conditions will your overall stopping distance increase? A. In the rain. Extra care should be taken in wet weather. On wet roads, your stopping distance could be double that in dry conditions. Question 29. You stop on the hard shoulder of a motorway and use the emergency telephone. Where's the best place to wait for help to arrive? B well away from the carriageway. When you're on the hard shoulder, you're at risk of being injured by motorway traffic. The safest place to wait is away from the carriageway, but near enough to see the emergency services arriving. Question 30. What would you expect to find at a contraflow system on a motorway? B. 
lower speed limits. When approaching a contraflow system, reduce speed in good time and obey all speed limits. You may be traveling in a narrower lane than normal, with no permanent barrier between you and the oncoming traffic. Be aware that the hard shoulder may be used for traffic and the road ahead could be obstructed by slow moving or broken down vehicles. Question 31. Which road users are most difficult to see when you're reversing your car? D. Children. It may not be possible to see a small child through the rear windscreen of your vehicle. Be aware of this before you reverse. If there are children about, get out and check that it's clear before reversing. Question 32. When must you use dipped headlights during the day? C. When you're driving in poor visibility. You must use dipped headlights when daytime visibility is seriously reduced, generally to 100 meters, 328 feet, or less. You may also use front or rear fog lights, but they must be switched off when visibility improves. Question 33. What should you do if you're being followed by an ambulance showing flashing blue lights? A. Pull over as soon as it's safe to do so. Pull over in a place where the ambulance can pass safely. Check that there are no bollards or obstructions in the road that will prevent it from passing. Question 34. Why are vehicles fitted with rear fog lights? C. To make them more visible in thick fog. Rear fog lights make it easier to spot a vehicle ahead in foggy conditions. Avoid the temptation to use other vehicles' lights as a guide, as they may give you a false sense of security. Question 35. You've driven up to a pelican crossing. What must you do while the amber light is flashing? C. Give way to any pedestrians on the crossing. The flashing amber light allows pedestrians already on the crossing to get to the other side before a green light shows to the traffic. Be aware that some pedestrians, such as older people and young children, need longer to cross. Let them do this at their own pace. Question 36. You're on a three-lane motorway. Which lane are you in if there are red reflective studs on your left and white ones to your right? D. In the left-hand lane. The colors of the reflective studs on the motorway and their locations are red, between the hard shoulder and the carriageway. White, between lanes. Amber, between the carriageway and the central reservation. Green, along slip road exits and entrances. Bright green yellow, at roadworks and contraflow systems. Question 37. What does it mean if you see this signal on the motorway? A. Leave the motorway at the next exit. You'll see this sign if there has been an incident ahead and the motorway is closed. 
you must obey the sign. Make sure that you prepare to leave in good time. Don't cause drivers to take avoiding action by cutting in at the last moment. Question 38. Which is the oil filler cap? C. Next to the oil cap there should be the dipstick which you use to check the oil level. Question 39. What does this line across the road at the entrance to a roundabout mean? A. Give way to traffic from the right. Slow down as you approach the roundabout and check for traffic from the right. If you need to stop and give way, stay behind the broken line until it's safe to emerge onto the roundabout. Question 40. You're at an incident. What could you do to help an unconscious casualty? B. Check that they're breathing normally. If a casualty is unconscious, you need to check that they're breathing normally. Look for chest movements, look and listen for breathing, and feel for breath on your cheek. Question 41. What should you remove from your car before leaving it unattended? D. The vehicle registration document. Never leave the vehicle registration document inside your car. This document would help a thief to dispose of your car more easily. Question 42. You want to turn left at this junction. What should you do if your view of the main road is restricted? D. Approach slowly and edge out until you can see more clearly. You should slow right down, and stop if necessary, at any junction where your view is restricted. Edge forward until you can see properly. Only then can you decide whether it's safe to go. Question 43. What's the speed limit for a car towing a trailer on a motorway? C. 60 miles per hour. If you're towing a small, light trailer, it won't reduce your vehicle's performance by very much and it may not be visible in your mirrors. However, strong winds or buffeting from large vehicles might cause the trailer to snake from side to side. Be aware of your speed and don't exceed the reduced speed limit imposed on vehicles towing trailers. Question 44. What's the purpose of triangular shape signs? A. To give warnings. Triangular signs warn you of hazards ahead. Make sure you look at each sign that you pass on the road, so that you don't miss any vital instructions or information. Question 45. You have to make an unexpected journey. You're carrying a five-year-old child on the back seat of your car. They're under 1.35 meters, for feet 5 inches, tall. How should you seat them if a correct child restraint isn't available? B. Using an adult seat belt. 
in journeys of unexpected necessity, and when a correct child restraint isn't available, the child must sit on the rear seat and use an adult seat belt. In a collision, unrestrained objects and people can cause serious injury or even death. Question 46. What's the legal minimum depth of tread for car tires? B. 1.6 mm. Car tires must have sufficient depth of tread to give them a good grip on the road surface. The legal minimum for cars is 1.6 mm. This depth should be across the central three quarters of the breadth of the tire and around the entire circumference. Question 47. You're driving along this road. What should you do if the red car cuts in close in front of you? C. Drop back to leave the correct separation distance. There are times when other drivers make incorrect or ill-judged decisions. Be tolerant and try not to retaliate or react aggressively. Always consider the safety of other road users, your passengers, and yourself. Question 48. A single carriageway road has this sign. What's the maximum permitted speed for a car towing a trailer? C. 50 miles per hour. When you're towing a trailer, a reduced speed limit also applies on dual carriageways and motorways. These lower speed limits apply to vehicles pulling all sorts of trailers, including caravans and horse boxes. Question 49. What does this sign indicate? A. A diversion route. When a diversion route has been put in place, drivers are advised to follow a symbol, which may be a black triangle, square, circle or diamond shape on a yellow background. Question 50. You're traveling at the legal speed limit. What should you do if the vehicle behind approaches quickly, flashing its headlights? D. Allow the vehicle to overtake. Don't enforce the speed limit by blocking another vehicle's progress. This will only cause frustration. Allow the other vehicle to pass when you can do so safely. If you want to pass DVSA theory test in first time, you can download our EOS app. App contains 2500 DVSA test questions. 250 hazard perception videos, 630 traffic road signs and 300 highway code rules. Even 98.50% people pass their test first time after using our app. You can find link in the description, download app for free from App Store which contains latest 2024 material licensed by DVSA authority, get 3 days free trial for a limited time.